Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with my main deck in Clash Royale. Since their creation, recruits have been an ever-present menace in the meta, and the ranked 97 player in the world is using this deck. When you defend with archers, goblin cage, or flying machine and your opponent's down elixir, you'll have a prime time opportunity to go for recruits at the river. Recruits will continuously tank cannoneer tower shots so your evolved archers, flying machine, and rail hogs can trample towers. And with this updated version of rail recruits, opponents have more to fear than the flying machine. Evolved archers are sinister sniping monsters. You can get evolved archers on both sides behind recruits and rail hogs for multiple layers of tags. And if opponents drop units far away to counter your recruits, they'll take max damage from evolved archers, since evolved archers do amplified damage to further away targets. And barbarrel evolved archers and fly machine to clean up and snipe buildings in the middle, granting the pigs and rail recruits the pathway to achieve their dreams of destroying the opponent's tower. If you want to use evolved goblin cage, you can swap in zappies for archers. Let's go on a rampage with our recruits and assert dominance. And archer arrows are loved. Everyone supporting the channel with critter code sir tag. All right, we got a game against a supercell creator. You can only get that banner if you're in the Supercell Creator program. He's also a part of the Fire Nation, so this guy's a part of multiple different clans. We're going to be dropping our archers at the start, and maybe we can combust his towers real quick with an aggressive Royal Recruits rush. Usually, this is not a push to take towers, but particularly in a position where opponent has minimal elixir, I think it could work out in our favor. So, as you guys are noticing, he doesn't have that much since he dropped his princess, and he's taking a ton of damage in the right. And he has barely anything on the left. You know what? Screw it. We're full sending. We're dropping Royal Hogs because you dropped your Goblin Gang when you were at three Elixir. So if you don't have anything and you have to deal with Royal Hogs at the same time, I can eat some Spear Goblins on the left since I've taken damage on the right. So we're evening up our tower damage-ish. Not really. We didn't even take that much on the left. So we're in a phenomenal position moving forward. Don't drop your Royal Hogs that often. It's generally a pretty risky strategy. If you drop Royal Hogs and they drop a Mega Knight, they're going to kill you because it'll delete your Royal Hogs. He'll be down to Elixir, but they'll have a full HP Mega Knight trotting towards your tower. So the way that I play this deck, I generally wait for my opportunities to go in for Royal Recruits. I'll maybe go in for like Archer Split in the back. I'll typically go in for Goblin Cage in the middle of the cycle, but I won't drop my Recruits in the back unless I have no other option early on without knowing what my opponent's deck is. Now, since I know he's going to have Log Bait, I can go for our Royal Recruits. I can also monitor with an Electro Spirit in case he wants to spam me, and that's exactly what he's doing. So Electro Spirit might be able to tank just long enough for the Spear Goblins to target the Recruits. Nah, I think one of them hit my tower. Did both of them hit my tower? Bro, that's illegal. That's not supposed to happen. Where's the red card on that? I mean, he is Red King after all. All right, we're going to swing through with the Bar Barrel. Wait, I had no faith. I had zero faith in my ability of the Recruits to pulverize all of those evolved skeletons. And I couldn't justify having those multiply near my tower. So I rolled through with the bar barrel and I wasted two elixir. Man, I should have I should have put some respect on their name. Those freaking recruits are ruthless wrecking skeletons here. All right, he's probably going to princess. So we're going to go in for a fly machine to snipe it. Wow, I was right on the money. It's not even that funny how much damage we're about to get on that knight. That thing is getting deleted from the game. Let's go. I'm going to bar barrel as well just to keep up the pressure. I wonder if I can get back to a good answer. If I go for an Electro Spirit here and get our Archers in front, he doesn't get a shred of damage. All right, we're going to go in for a Royal Hog split just because I think he's going to go for a building, and I want to make sure that I can get damage on top of that. If the Archer locks onto the tower, I will win the game. So we're trying to snipe the Princess with all of our might, and we're not going to get it. So this is one of those situations where I think arrowing three times wins me the game, so that is worthwhile. He's definitely adjusting this off to the left. You can look at the shadow of the Goblin Barrel and deduce where it's going to go. Next strat, we're just going to rush through with Royal Hogs, go in for an Electro Spirit, and arrows twice and win the game. So this should be all locked up. I wonder if the Electro Spirit chains on. It did! <laughs> That's crazy. He gave us a Congo line on our way to win. Electric Spirit celebrating all the way to victory. Or at least I think the Electric Spirit hit the tower. Maybe it was just the piggies and the arrows. Bro just got booted from the Fire Nation because he couldn't master fire to the point of lightning. After capitalizing and conquering our opponent early on in the match, we pushed up to 3,300 in the world. All right, so we got a game against someone with the OP Psycho Clan. Please go and cycle some more bait cards into me, brother. I'm ready for it. Our best play is just to wait a little bit. Unfortunately, the spirit will die to this. Oh, wait. Uh, the cannoneer was able to one-shot one of the spear goblins before it locked onto my tower, so that's huge. We're going to go for royal hogs right now. Unfortunately, a couple of the bats will lock onto me, but it's not terrible. If this is a Mega Knight matchup, I would not be surprised. That is the majority of the meta right now. If I go Barbro, we might be able to clean up the majority of those spear goblins. 
Not gonna kill him all in time, but it's still okay. Goblin Cage at the bridge is aggressive as heck, but we're here for it. Also, I want to go for a fly machine and then save my electric spirit for the bats and make a prediction on that. I feel like it would just be cool. Especially since our opponent has Princess Tower, it's not like it's going to do super hot into us. Throw an electric spirit on the bats and make the prediction. Let's go. Get wrecked, my guy. He even said well played. He, he respects it. He respects it. So our strategy now is to identify his card cycle and outplay him and make moves that way. If I go in for recruits, I need to make sure that I also end up having a goblin cage in the business because if I don't, I'm going to get fired by a Mega Knight. So, Malevolent Mega Knight Man is not the nicest person for us. Definitely want to go for a Barbarian Barrel to sweep up those skeletons. And then, we might have a pretty clean counter push here. The Archer, uh, it's not going to kill all the bats, never mind. I was looking at it, I was like, Archer, are you able to put in the double shift? Are you putting in, in the work? And uh, it's, it's going overtime, but it's not doing as much as it should. Also, our opponent doesn't have that much elixir. They just dropped a Goblin Gang, so I think they're going to go Mega Knight right now, but they're going to be down a lot. I'm going to Electric Spirit on top of some of the Spear Goblins and minimize the amount of damage that we take, but yeah, look. Whenever you have Mega Knight, but you don't have Elixir, of course I'm going to punish you, dude. Like, you had no business dropping the Goblin Gang in the right, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, that's much delight for me. All right, we're able to go Archers here, and then I'm definitely going to go Barbaro. Reason is, is I need to keep all of his units pretty high up, so then the Archers are able to finish off the Bats. Otherwise, what would happen is the Bats would go towards my tower, and then also we needed to guarantee that the Mega Knight was going to stay at bay and not jump on my Archers. Now I'm going to go Royal Hogs on the right side, because I think he's going to be inclined to Mega Knight here, and then he has nothing. Like, you're just, you're so screwed. Like, what are, what are you doing? What are you doing, my dude? That is insanely good for me. All right. So instead of being foolish and arrowing here, I'm just going to make sure I get the trade that I want. I'm going to go in for an Electric Spirit here on top of the Spear Goblins. And then uh, it didn't lock into the Spear Goblins, actually. So a little bit sad, but it's fine. I mean, split up our Royal Hogs and do enough damage on either side. So then uh, we're able to probably capture the W. We'll see, though. I'm going to go in for arrows in the right and win the game, right? Yeah, nice. I'm so proud of myself. I, like, played safe the entire time. Play calculative and destroyed a Mega Knight player. Like, this game was not even close. We could take either tower if we wanted, and arrows will seal the deal. So, as you guys can see, if you match into Mega Knight, as long as you apply pressure at the right point, no matter what matchup you play into, you can win. Rail Hogs, Rail Recruits can poke and prod and always find openings. It's extraordinarily difficult at all points in the game to have enough elixir to counter the split lane shenanigans. Star Bros got Mega Knight in the banner, and we're ready to bewilder him with recruits at the river. I never do this, but if you go and drop 7 Elixir in the back, I kind of have to, right? I'm also going to go for Archers so we can stop those Skeleton Dragons from being a huge threat to me. If I'm able to eliminate the Skeleton Dragon, then he's not going to get as much counter push behind the Lobhound. Also, we can start to damage down the Lobhound so that I'm able to Arrows on top of the Inferno Dragon and also the Lava Pups at the same time. That would be our best possible interaction here. I'm going to get ready with my Electric Spirit. Hopefully, we're going to be able to distract this a little bit longer. If not, it's okay. Still going to get a good interaction overall, as long as he doesn't void on our precious fly machine. So, looking good because we're able to get counter push with Rail Hogs and await the last possible second. And pray now that he doesn't have Fireball. Yes, guys, he's probably going to have a spell, but I don't know which one. He didn't void last time, so I was thinking it could be Fireball, and then I still went for the Rail Hogs because I live a life on the edge, apparently. So, I'm going to go Archers here, and then I can go split Rail Recruits. I think it's in our best interest to do that. I might not have enough elixir for this, but I'm really hoping I can have enough for the Royal Recruits at the river. Barely going to be able to afford it, guys. We're poor, but hopefully the Recruits value can soar. So I'm going to go in for arrows whenever I get the chance on top of the Skeleton Dragons. I need to minimize the amount of Skeleton Dragons health that they have. Otherwise, our archers are going to accomplish nothing. And if we snag both towers right now, we might have already captured a win. So as you can see, defend with your archers, then drop your Recruits at the river. Also, you can go for Recruits at the River in a lot of other situations, but for the most part, I like defending against Lava Hounds using Skeleton Dragon counters with arrows when we kill the Lava Hound first. So I'm going to try to pop the Lava Hound as quickly as I possibly can and then win the game afterward. Let's see if this goes as planned. Also, we're going to go and drop our Electro Spirit here. We're going to drop our uh, Goblin Cage, and then I think in this positioning, we can lock onto the Balloon first. This will be horrible for him. If he just loses that... No! Wait, wait, wait. If we arrows, we can kill the balloon, right? Yeah, all right, cool. And then we can get Electric Spirit down and we're chilling. That was super risky and calculative because I knew that we had barely enough damage with the arrows there to finish that off. We're going to lose the tower here, almost guaranteed, but... Aw, oh, I was going to say, like, what if we get Skeleton Dragon's counter with archers? 
and then we're able to arrows everything down because we pop that and then the lob hound dies to the arrows with 28 seconds remaining i think he has to go for the three crown and that's exactly what he's going to try to do and the arrows on absolutely everything here then i'm going to go in for a fly machine you know the bad thing about this matchup he's going to have fireball and he's also going to have an amazing answer to our archers with arrows so fireball and arrows and he still loses to us that's insane i thought we would win guaranteed and i thought about his spells a little bit and i was like yeah you know i shouldn't be able to defend this at least against void i can stack up a ton of stuff to stop him from finishing off my fly machine miraculously in the worst possible matchup against lava hound we still pop his balloon party by applying offense at the right points hey we got a game against rockstar there's no way so he's a supercell creator and he's one of the best players so he's gonna be really fun to play into i think he's generally at the top like thousand in the world and whenever I push up, I do play into him. So it's cool to match into someone that I know. I'm going to go in for our rail recruits in the back here. And I don't like doing this as often, but we want to go and protect our archer in the left. Is he playing minor poison or is he playing graveyard? Using poison, fire spirit, and knight is awkward. Like, I don't know what I'm playing into right now. I do know that I want to catapult as much crap as I possibly can in the right side. Generally, when your opponent has cannoneer and they're down elixir and they have to deal with bait cards, it's an awesome opportunity to swarm him. So I'm going in with my Royal Hogs, my Fly Machine, and I probably could go in for a Barbril on top of whatever bait card he drops nearby to stop the Fly Machine. So I'm going to go and do that right now. What card are you going to do? Oh, I was hoping he dropped the Skeletons near the river, but he didn't. That's unfortunate. Can the Barbril get hits? Oh my gosh, let's go! Two hits from the Barbril. That's insane. I've never seen a Barbarian Barrel hit the tower twice, ever. It just doesn't happen. Usually it dies and gets distracted, or it gets one hit because the opponent ignores it, but our Barbrils are built different. They are rocking Rockstar. Dude, that's crazy. Are they throwing their swords on the tower to get extra hits? How do they do it? Anyway, Fire Spirit and Cannon Cart. Poison. I still don't know what you're playing. I think it's going to be Graveyard if I had to guess, but if you lose that Cannon Cart before it crosses the river, you are in the gravest position possible, Rockstar. All right, so because we don't have good answers to Graveyard in our deck besides Archers, I need to hold the door here. So it's important for me to go for the majority of the Piggies on the right side, but I'm going to still stagger one on the left, so he has to respond to the Fly Machine instead of just letting it die to the Cannoneer. Can we get some Piggy Touches on the tower? Yes! One more? No, I didn't get it, and it's still not an arrow range. If you hold down the card, you can see how much damage your spells do, and my spell does 135. That's how much arrows do. I'm going to go Electric Spirit on the right side, and then I'm going to posture with our Goblin Cage in the middle. And I think we could go for recruits right now. I definitely want to go and cycle them more aggressively so we don't get him to cross the river. Wait, he doesn't have what I thought he had at all. My guy, Rockstar, is standing tall with an entirely different deck. He's running drill, but he's found zero breathing room, zero opportunities to cycle it the entire game. That's hilarious. Okay, so he log plus drill damage to be able to go and kill our archer evolution. So that was very smart on his end. But if we just kill his cannon cart... How is he expecting to do anything here? I'm going to fly machine on the left. And whenever you play against drill, the best way to win against it is using your bar Brill to clean up the goblins that are spawning. You can also make predictions and go goblin cage in front of the tower if they end up dropping their uh, drill evolution there. Wow. Okay. All right. We're just going to bar Brill to clean that up and we should be a-okay. Not going to take too much damage today. We're also going to go for archers. Nah, yeah, I think I'll go archers on the next wave. I think I'll go archers on the next wave. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna arrows here. Real hogs probably do enough damage for us to win, and we walk away with a win before we even drop our archers on defense. So as you guys can see, if you play against someone with Drill, use your Barbaro on defense because you don't have Valkyrie and you don't have Dark Prince. As exemplified by that game, you can catch the best players off guard with this recruit spam deck. Even though Rockstar finished 187 in the world, he still wasn't ready for this Dirty Dex bridge spam. So we're matching into a top 1000 player for the last game of the day. He's already going in for a minor, so he'll probably be playing like a balloon deck, a minor poison deck, or maybe like minor Meganite wall breakers or something. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to go for Rail Hogs because he is going to be down a little bit of Elixir after doing that. Whoa, dude's got Barbarians Miner. It has to be Lava Hound Miner. It has to be Lava Miner. So I'm going to go for Archers on the left side, just to apply more pressure. I'm going for like Blood in the Water, full Parade push here. It's not necessarily the easiest play to do and get away with. But as you guys saw in the earlier match, I think like second game of the day, the dude had Lava Hound and Arrows and Fireball, and it was really tough. This time, the guy's going to have a Barbarian's Void deck. The Barbs are kind of great at shutting down our Royal Hogs and Recruits. 
If you go Recruits Evolution and they go Barb's Evolution, they spend two less Elixir and they get a phenomenal trade, plus two trade every single time, shutting down your Royal Hogs or your Recruits. Uh, and it's just not a good experience. But yeah, he's going to get a uh, plus two trade. So we want to go for a Fly Machine here. Maybe get him to go in for a Void. I don't know if he wants to Void on the Fly Machine. He might. He's going to Inferno Dragon instead. That's more respectable. Can we go Bar Barrel here? Clean up the Barbarian. Barb on Barb action. And then we can go for Arrows afterward if we need to. Inferno Dragon will die as long as he doesn't have Freeze. Which, this is interesting. He's going to go for a Zap. And he gets wrecked. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. People aren't ready for arrows. Especially if you wait a little bit, they'll go for a minor or maybe they'll go in for a void and then they'll clean up your anti-air and they'll go all in with the push expecting to get thousands of damage if not the tower and then they'll be sitting there astonished wondering why you have barbarial plus arrows for quality cleanup. But it's not just great against bait, it's good against Lava Hound too. I'm going to go for our recruits here again and then I think he's going to go in for a void so it's going to be hard for us to get value of this fine mission. We're going to go directly into barbarians but we'll see what we can get. Ely, Skeleton Dragons. All right, fine. We'll go Archers. Can we snipe the Skeleton Dragons? I think so. Yo! Yo, 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 yo. The Archer's still alive. Can we 3 ground? Screw it. I'm going to full send it. I'm full sending this. Because I can defend with the Goblin Cage. And then I can Arrows on the Lava Hound and also the Balloon. That Archer is putting in so much work. It honestly was about to 3 crown the guy. That's what I'm talking about, guys. And then 500 HP is left on the 3. I'm taking the 3 crown. Screw it. I don't care about taking one tower. We want more. We want it all. So I'm literally going to take them all right now. We're going to catch all the Pokemon. I'm going to Barbarrel here. And then I'm going to go for a Fly Machine as soon as the Barbarians are back. And then I think we got the three in the bag. There's no reason for me to even try to defend here. Ruthless Aggression is what we're about. Never doubt it even for a single second. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. Top 1,000 player down and out. I know a metric ton of people were doubting the Evolved Archers in this stack, but without the singular Evolved Archer on the three crown, this game simply wouldn't have been ours. Royally poke the like button, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.